Hello, this is Mrs. Spellman. Welcome to my first video for my J276 revision flashcards. I hope you find this to be a useful resource for your revision. For each topic, I will give you an opportunity to pause the video. Once you press play, you'll get an overview of the topic, but not all the detail. So treat it like flashcards, although they are video audio flashcards you can switch off the audio if you wish whatever you do be active in your learning this video focuses on systems architecture which is topic one of paper one here is the list of bullet points for systems architecture let's get started The purpose of the central processing unit. The purpose of the CPU is to carry out the fetch execute cycle. The CPU fetches an instruction from memory, it decodes the instruction, and then it executes the instruction. This is then repeated. CPU registers. Registers are very fast memory locations in the CPU. Each has a specific purpose. Memory address register. The memory address register is a CPU register that stores the address of a location in memory. This is the address of the location that will be read from or written to by the CPU. Memory Data Register The Memory Data Register is a CPU register that stores data. This is data that has just been read from or is about to be written to memory. Program Counter The program counter is a CPU register that stores an address. This is the address of the next instruction to be fetched from memory. The value of the program counter is incremented by 1 after an instruction is fetched. Accumulator The accumulator is a CPU register. It stores the results of the processing of the arithmetic logic unit. Arithmetic logic unit. The arithmetic logic unit carries out mathematical calculations and logical comparisons. Control unit. The control unit manages the fetch execute cycle. It manages the movement of data and signals around the computer. Cache. Cache is very fast memory inside the CPU. It contains the data and instructions most likely to be needed immediately by the CPU. CPU performance. And this is based on characteristics of the CPU. Clock speed, cache size, cores. We're going to take each of these in turn. CPU performance clock speed. The fetch execute cycle is carried out to the beat of an internal clock. The faster it beats, the more instructions can be executed per second. Clock speed is measured in hertz. Example, gigahertz. A CPU with a higher clock speed will perform faster than a CPU with a lower clock speed, all else being equal. The CPU with a higher clock speed will be able to execute more instructions per second. CPU performance cache size. 
Cache is very fast memory inside the CPU. It stores the data and instructions that are most likely to be needed immediately by the CPU. The control unit looks for the data and instructions that are needed next in the cache. If they are not there, then it will take longer as they will need to be fetched from RAM, which is further away from the control unit than cache. So a CPU with a larger cache size will perform better, all else being equal. CPU performance number of cores. A core is like a mini processor within the CPU. A dual core processor has two cores. A quad core has four. Cores may share resources such as level two and level three cache, depending on the design. A CPU with a greater number of cores than another may perform better, all else being equal. However, it depends on whether the algorithm being worked on is suitable to parts of being carried out in parallel at the same time. Purpose of embedded systems. What do you know about embedded systems? An embedded system is a small computer system built into a larger device. The software has a dedicated purpose. The hardware is typically a microcontroller. It is inexpensive and it only needs a small amount of energy. What examples have you got of embedded systems? Think of two. So my examples here are a washing machine and a vending machine. You may have chosen something else. However, a computer, a desktop computer, a laptop, even a tablet, they're all general purpose computers. They don't have dedicated functions. So they're not correct to give us examples of embedded systems. And that's it for systems architecture. I hope that you have found this video to be useful.